afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. This is Afternoon Express. My name is Jeannie D. Welcome indeed. I'm Bonnie Booty. If you're loving the way we're looking today, you can pop over to our website and our Facebook page to see where we've got these. You definitely look like a sexy little kid. <laughs> <laughs> now, this Sunday is Father's Day, and celebrating that, we've got an amazing jazz duo, father and son team, and they are possibly the best jazz musicians that South Africa has. We're going to be having a look at what they're up to. They are Steve and Bukhani Dyer. They're amazingly talented. Well, can't wait. We're also joined by Blake Dyson, who's an outdoor enthusiast and a motivational speaker, and he'll be giving us some health inspiration up ahead the weekend. And today, we're a home and afternoon express. We're joined by an Anne Result, who's going to give us some bathroom inspiration for our young designers contestants. Have you ever been hypnotized? No, and I've always refused to. Oh, now, I don't know if I've got the ability to be hypnotized, it. but you know this. I also don't trust what's in my head. <laughs> so there's that show on SABC3, One Day with Brian Miles. Well, we have Brian Miles in the loft. He's an illusionist slash mentalist. And I don't know. I'm, he's going like to read our minds. I think he's going to read our minds. I know. I'm so excited. No one wants to know what's in our heads. I hope there's something in there for him to read. <laughs> Let's check out and see what's happening in the kitchen. Yes, and it is the weekend. Ow! Ow! You see, that's what your father's going to feel like if you don't make him something super delicious this weekend. So on Afternoon Express today, as we prepare for Father's Day, we're making you the ultimate steak sandwich. It's going to be super delicious. Clem. I knew you were faking it. You were worried there for a few seconds. Uh, you were. Nah, nah. I knew you were faking it. <laughs> so tell me, how are we going to make this ultimate sandwich? You have to say it like that every okay, time. I've got a bit of a, a dad moment right now. Okay. So, see, your dad raised you. Uh -huh. So it's up to you to raise the stakes. Oh. And if you don't, that'll be a mistake. <sighs> How's that for Daniel? That, that's, that's pretty vanilla-like. I, I rate that's like <laughs> vanilla on point. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> Wait, so what are we adding to the steak that's gonna be so delicious? What makes it ultimate? Okay, so for, first of all, forget the bun. I know, how can I say that, forget yes, the bun? Yes. But instead, we're gonna be using this guy, an English muffin. Oh my word. Okay, why? I don't know, tell me. Just because, you can. Oh gosh. Okay, awesome. So our minds are about to be blown on Afternoon Express as we make the ultimate steak sandwich. We've said an ultimate steak sandwich. You guys can cook along with us by getting the recipe and the shopping list from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. And you can make everything we make on Afternoon Express. So our minds are about to be blown in the kitchen, but our first guest is a performer who is trained in the art of thought deception. He has performed across the globe from London to New York for movie stars and celebrities. His unique act is unequaled and he's also the star of SABC 3's One Day with Brian Miles. Take a look at how your mind is about to be blown. It's been suggested that we only use 10% of our brain's true potential. I'm Brian Miles, and join me as we discover together what's possible in one day. <laughs> I didn't do that. That was weird. Look how lucky you are. It's not that one either. That's the three. Oh, my gosh, my heart is going to beat out of my... Oh, Brian Miles, welcome to the lot. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for having welcome. me. welcome. Lovely to have you with us. I'm so nervous already. I'm like, don't read my mind. No, no, she's no, been having no. anxiety the yeah. whole day. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 it's fine. It's... You are trained in the art of thought deception. Like, where right. on earth do you learn that? Yeah, uh, from the back of a cornflakes box, I guess. No, no, <laughs> no. Um, I've always been obsessed with uh, how the mind works. And as a child, I was like always obsessed with pulling things apart, you know, I want to know how things work and then also wanted to know why they work. And then very early on I realized that um, our mind can be deceived and yeah. how easy it is for our mind to be deceived. Everything we perceive in life takes place in here. And then I got interested in things like hypnosis, um, sleight of hand, uh, psychology, all of these things. And, I, and to answer your question, I just read everything I possibly could on wow. hypnosis, psychology, magic, all of those things, and just kind of put them all together. So it's not like being a clairvoyant where oh. you've got this magical power that no. you can understand what we're thinking. No. It's kind of, are you just a little bit more like aware of what people Absolutely. are doing and saying. Absolutely, I think, uh, yeah, not like a clairvoyant at <laughs> all. Um, I don't have the long hair or, you know, a lot of cats or anything like that. But um, I think essentially what I do is I believe that any piece of information that's in our minds has the ability to leak at some point, either through okay. what we say or what we do. Sometimes we're aware of it and sometimes we're not aware of it. 
And all I try and do is I try and dramatize the, the power of the human mind yeah. and, and tap into that. Yeah. Do you think you're an absolute nightmare to have as a boyfriend? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Why? Uh, yes, those those words. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you know what's on everyone's mind or your girlfriend's mind, well, then it's like kind of, you Oh, know, my God. I think that would be great. I yes. wish somebody could yeah. <laughs> yeah, most of the time they're thinking about losing weight, talking to somebody about losing weight and so forth. Not oh, the yeah. most sexist thing you're going to no, say today. No, no, <laughs> no. Okay, but now back to, her, well, chatting about hypnosis. Yeah. I mean, that must be quite an amazing skill yes. to acquire. Absolutely. Because medically, hypnosis has, you know, a fa scientific yeah. basis and, and, and merit. Absolutely. So, I mean, when you do it, you do it largely for entertainment. Yes. But yes. if you had to maybe hypnotize me and tell me, you know, don't ever drink champagne again, <laughs> you are skinny don't, don't eat, eat ice cream and chocolates and carbs anymore i mean how would yeah. that would would that penetrate my brain absolutely but i would i would answer your question this way i would say are you willing to be hypnotized yes you see if you have the motivation to be hypnotized then you already have the motivation to do all those things you just said oh jeez oh. you see now you're making gotcha. it my hard work again <laughs> and not quite the answer you wanted <laughs> are some people more prone to be manipulated yes. mentally and less than others yes absolutely i think there's a big myth that says that People who uh, can be hypnotized are weak-willed, you know, don't have a strong mind, and it's completely the opposite. It's almost paradoxical yeah. in the sense that a good hypnotic subject is somebody who can relax but concentrate at the same time. And it sounds like, how could Ooh. you possibly do that? But that's what it is. And I find that the most um, intellectual people, people who can really focus intently on a single idea, are the best hypnotic subject. Oh, no, I'm I don't know if that rules you two out, but that. yeah. <laughs> but you had Claire Wynn Stanley on your show. Yes, we had How Claire. was she? Yeah, she was fantastic. Um, she's actually going to be in the episode that airs this Sunday. I think yeah. I have a clip which I can show. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We actually had a sister with her. As you know, she's a twin. And yeah. um, her particular demonstration was being, uh, it was about being at the right place at the right time. Okay, so then what oh, happened? Wow. Well, I don't want to ruin it for everyone because the episode hasn't oh, yeah, aired yet. Coming this set. But okay, I'm sure you've had that experience in life where you've, you've just been at the right place at the right time and there's no other explanation for it. If you yeah, weren't at the robots at that time, you wouldn't have seen your friend who you hadn't seen from 10 years ago, or whatever it is. Of course. And I love those moments in life and yeah. the demonstration with Claire was to see whether we could actually manifest that um, on command. Wow. Okay, well, let's yeah. do something. So you're going to do, yeah. dem you're gonna do yeah, demonstrations so, yeah, so, on us, right? Yeah, well, well, yeah, you make it sound very fascinating <laughs> like that. Um, I'll watch. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do you one at a time. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, yeah, so, so, Bonnie, what I'd like to do with you, obviously, like I said, you know, I believe that any information in our mind has the ability to leak, and either through what we say or through what we do, and it's my job to try and extract information. And I'm sure you've ever, have you ever sort of seen maybe a couple sitting on a bench and then like a, uh, a pretty girl walks past and then the, the husband just kind of looks and the wife just whoosh, you know slaps and he, she, he didn't have to say anything she knew what he was thinking right yeah. this is kind of the yeah. dynamic that i like right okay. so it's important that uh, we have something that's completely random so i picked up a bunch of magazines from my doctor's office okay um, so i do my they catch definitely up. look like they're from a doctor's office i'm just kidding office. these aren't from my no, doctor's i read the time all the time these, these aren't from my doctor's <laughs> this is from a dentist but um i'll tell you what yeah take a magazine for me okay here's what you're going to do i want you to um Open up the magazine to any article you like and hold it up so the cameras don't see so that I can't see either. I'll kind of look away this way. Pick a, uh, a long, nice word. We're talking seven or eight letters long. Do you have one word in mind? I have one. Nice long one, yeah? Yeah. You do? Okay. <laughs> and um, I want you to visualize it in your mind. Okay. And here's what we're going to do. Can you come a little closer? Can I just hold your hands? Of course. And just relax something like this. Very good. And what I want you to do is in your mind, imagine a big white screen. Imagine you can see the letters of this word that you're thinking of, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to recite the alphabet, okay? Just can you look me straight? Yeah, we go. I'm going to uh, recite the alphabet. Every time you hear can a I letter, close my eyes? no, no, <laughs> please don't, please don't. Every time you hear a letter okay. that is in your word, just in your head, think yes. Don't say it. Just think yes, okay? Okay. That's all you do, okay? So here we go. As I go through the alphabet, so Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. Give me a chance. I got a whole that bunch. Was, how did you do that alphabet? <laughs> <laughs> Backwards. Um, I got a bunch of letters there. I honestly don't know which order they're in. So we're going to start on the first letter. It was quite, did I catch you off guard there a little bit? Okay, it's fine. I was like, what alphabet is that? <laughs> um, I mean, I was I know, waiting I'm for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Exactly, right? So it's a little counterintuitive. So can you focus on just the first letter of your word? Don't mm -hmm. tell me, just focus on the first mm -hmm. letter. I don't want the cameras to see this. So, um, um, okay, well, can you? Can you tell me, what's, just tell me the first letter, just the first letter. 
Just I. An I, really? Yeah. Uh, okay. And just focus on the second letter and the third letter. There's definitely a D. Yes. All right, an N and a D. Right? Yes. I think I've got an N and D. Okay, fair, very good. And now I want you to focus on the very last letter for me. Just go right to the end of the word. That's a vowel. I'll go with this. And pick a letter somewhere in the middle. Make it a difficult one. Don't tell me make it a difficult one. You're not thinking of a P, are you? Or a D? Okay, a little smile. That's right, that's right, that's right. I'm going to use my, I'm gonna use my, um, I'm gonna use my intuition to fill in the gaps here. Um, Text playing hangman with no. yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with um, I'm actually gonna rewrite it here. I'm just using my gut to fill this in. Yo, it's a long word. Okay. Um, I'm putting a question mark here just to cover myself because I don't know, I've just met you, okay? Uh, one word out of thousands, right? And you were quite stingy about the word, but that's fine, that's great. For the first time, what was the word you were thinking of? Independence. <laughs> okay, now that freaks me out. Okay, that was quite amazing. Independence, and I just want to. That wanna, was quite amazing. just come in now? I just want to see. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just. <laughs> that's just for you. So did you yeah, see any? Did you, you see any that. any changes in my like in my eyes? Any? Yeah, so, did I give you any cues when you were going through the word? The yeah. Letters? So so I mean I don't want to give away too much, but like we just talk about the alphabet. Like it completely yeah. hit you by surprise. And that's what I like to do is if you can just somehow get into the subconscious mind, like what, what is going on? There's certain things that happen to us. For example, if you're watching a scary movie, yeah. you know it's a movie, but you still get goosebumps. But you yeah. know it's special effects, you know there's a guy holding a thing, but you just can't control that. Yeah. And it's about tapping into that. So, and it's very impressive when I pull it off, and when I don't pull it off, we just don't talk about it. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. I want more magic a little bit later. <laughs> but now make sure you catch One Day with Brian Miles every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. on SABC3. So while we gather up all the shattered pieces of our minds, well, at least mine's still intact, <laughs> stay right where you are, because after the break, we're going to be making the ultimate ribeye steak sandwich, the perfect dish to make your dad this weekend for Father's Day. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now it is the weekend, it's the countdown to Father's Day, so we're making and said along with me the ultimate steak sandwich on the show today. Clemmer showed us an incredible recipe where basically what he's done is he's done just four things and giggles, I'll say, for today. Things and giggles. You've, you've added extra elements to this thing and just made it super delicious. So let's get started. Cool. So let me get the pan on heat along. So I'm going to go with the English muffin. Okay. It's got a lot more texture than a normal bun does. And I kind of feel like that really goes well with this big, robust, Ultimate steak sandwich. It feels so, like a bit of a girly bun to go with an ultimate steak sandwich. Like a like a an English muffin sounds like something you you like eat for breakfast. I swear, I almost wanted to like give it a little shot. With the <laughs> well, you said it's got lots of texture, so it might hurt. So no, absolutely not. It's got a lot more flavour, I feel, than okay. a normal bun does. Yes. And let me just show you, it's got a lot more of the air pockets in there. That's because mm. of the way that it's been made. And I want all those air pockets in there because that's uh -huh. going to hold all the extra flavour that's going to be like coming out of our steak, all those juices, okay. all the sauces. Am I selling it well enough? You are selling okay. it well enough. Also. It's almost like a polenta, so it's got like a slightly more rigid and, uh, I don't know, what, what are the words, like, um, just sucking words out of this I know, situation. I'm like, where are you going with this? I like English muffins because they are slightly more crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. Let's just you just had to say that from the beginning. But also, <laughs> I don't want this to just be like for dinner or for lunch. I find like this is a, like a really cool brunch yeah. dish. Yeah. So I've got some butter in there. I'm going to add the bun in there. Can you pass another one that's already been sure. sliced? Ta-da! Cool. So what I've also got, ooh, got it, thank you so much. That's, that's toasting up Keep really quickly. Keep hold of those buns. Hold on and turn them tightly, Clem. You're just going to drop your buns. Oh my. Terrible. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. So what I've got is, I've got a ribeye over here. Mm -hmm. And I've taken this out of the fridge half an hour ago. And they let it come to room temperature. Okay. Season it a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little olive oil. Olive oil's fine. People always, like, often say, how can you serve a steak with olive oil? It's absolutely fine. Yes. Don't stress about it. Okay, but butter adds a slight richer flavor to it. I, there there yeah. is a difference, but it's not the end of the world. It's not. Okay. So those are almost there. So what I did was then into a hot pan, five minutes aside, and what I got at the end was this guy. Okay. Okay, so he's busy resting. He's nearly there. What I'm going to do is just take the buns out of the pan again. Buns in, buns okay. out. Just because this is really hot. Yeah. A little bit more butter. I'm going to add a little bit of truffle flavor because it's Father's Day. We want to be a little extravagant. Okay. And try something new because it is, it is an aromatic too, so it adds a slight bit of zhuzh to it really what would does. be regarded as a normal steak sandwich. It does. And we've got some raw onion over here. That's going to go in as well. 
Oh, yeah. Just because I, I want to cook it out slightly, just take some of that pungency out of it. Mm. But I can smell it immediately. I love the smell of truffle. A lot of people say it's a pungent smell. I think it's delicious. It is. If it's in the right quantities. And I think this is it. So bun goes back in there just to suck up all that delicious truffle oh, flavor. Yummy. That's smelling amazing. It I'm going to pop these so over good. here. Oh, broke it. That's your one. No. Okay. <laughs> so let's get it out here. Onions. <laughs> Perfectly cooked with the truffle butter on there as well. Do so you want to keep a bit of a crunch in your onion? I think that's you what you're trying to prove here. So not, not make them so caramelized as a whole. It would be nice, but I think that little bit of a crunch adds texture. I just cooked it to take that like that immediate pungency out of the onion. Okay, so cool. I'm gonna give you the knife. Just a light spread of mustard. You'll we'll <gasps> be thinking, why'd you go all like crazy on the truffle and then you're gonna cover it with mustard? No. It works, don't worry. So in the ones that don't have, there we go. Got okay. it. And I love this mustard. Which one are you using? You're using a eh? Dijon. A Dijon. Dijon a mustard. Onion marmalade. Oh, yum. And that's just a sweetness. So many flavors. Kind of... He's not going to know what's happened to him today when you're like feeding him, well, on Sunday, feeding him it's for Sunday. Father's Day. Exactly. He it's won't fine. know what happened to him. So the onion, the onion marmalade just cuts through all the other rich flavors that brings that sweetness through. Yeah. And now we're going to start slicing up our steak. So our steak's been resting. And I've let it rest for about five minutes now. Okay. And that's obviously let it cook through to the point where it needs to be cooked through. And it's okay enough to start cutting. It is. So can I ask you while I'm doing this, if you can just top the sure. onion marmalade side with some rocket. Rocket! And that's gonna give it a slight pepperiness. So you've it got is. all the sweets that you got there with your onions, you've got the sort of uh, mustard to complement now this peppery flavor of... Oh, oh, oh I did, did the wrong of... thing. Wait, hey, I did the wrong thing. No, you did, you did the right. right thing, okay, this side. So I'm using a ribeye today, but you could use a fillet, you could use a rump, you could use a mm. sirloin. Ribeye is nice because it's got that a little bit of extra fat, fat in there. Yeah. Okay, cool. So steak's going on. Then yeah. I've got some emmental, which I just thinly sliced. It's delicious, yeah. Over there. I saw you picking at the cheese earlier. I did pick at the cheese. I love emmental. It's one of my favorites. As mm. you can see. Cool. So if you can just top that. Sure. I'll take some of this over here. Oh, yummy. And hopefully, obviously, if your steak is still a little bit of warm, this emmental, because it's so thinly sliced, will melt just a tad to stay there. That's exactly why we're going to add it on now. So again, I love the ratio of meat to bun. Look at that. Yes. It's like a meat explosion. Just no bun. <laughs> <laughs> so they're quite small, right? But it's no, great there's because there's a lot of stuff in there. You've crammed a lot of things into the steak sandwich. So your dad should be able to hold one of these in each hand. Yes. That's a balanced <laughs> diet, right? A bun That's, in each hand. It's like an well, I don't know. Is that anyone's like father goals? It's like when I'm a dad one day, I want to be able to hold two buns in each. I Wait. think so. I think besides dads, that's everybody's just life mission right there. <laughs> I'm not going to. Are you trying to pull my leg with this thing? You're going to give me to say dodgy things on national a television? Little bit. You are a terrible <laughs> human being. If you want to make what we're making on Afternoon Express, you can go find the recipe on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. That's where you can find the delicious recipes we make on this show and it's called the ultimate steak sandwich as we prepare for Father's Day coming up on Sunday. Uh, we're gonna go across quickly to Bonnie. Any dad would be proud of that sandwich. Now Vodacom recently launched their new brand called Next Level. Last week we had one of their mentors, veteran goalkeeper Andre Arense in our loft and recently we caught up with Lindy Lou Alexander in Johannesburg for more insight into the initiative. Calling all talented musicians, soccer stars, designers, and people of the arts, Vodacom Next Level wants to launch your career. In addition to the Next Level campaign, the network has also launched an e-school and Next Level careers platform. So besides the soccer campaign, there's also two other aspects, which is e-school. Education is a massive passion point and concern for our youth. So through e-school, you can get access to zero-rated education videos and the full cap system is on there. We have also launched um, Next Level Careers. So if you're looking for a job or looking to earn some money, so consumers can go on there and look for jobs, upload, um, check in with the companies and have conversations um, for future employment through any one of the top six websites that we have zero rated. To register for Next Level, you have to dial a number on your phone and you have to be on the Vodacom network. So you dial star triple one star one two eight hash and we'll ask for your ID number to verify that you're under 25. If you're not under 25, you get your parental consent. But once that is verified, you then belong to the Next Level community. It's as simple as that. If you're an inspirational footballer, take a video not longer than one minute of yourself doing one of the three soccer drills and simply upload it at vodacomnextlevel.coza. So Next Level Soccer is obviously about discovering the best soccer talent in the country, um, specifically for, uh, for youngsters between the ages of 14 and 16. 
and they've got to upload their talent to the Vodacom Next Level .za website. And off the website, we are going to do a run of votes, so of the best skill. So from the top 100 to the top 32, the top 32 will go into a fantastic boot camp um, where some soccer legends will train them for a week. Um, legends like Mark Fish and Lucas Radebe. And we'll also take them through digital skills training. The top 16 are going to win a fantastic scholarship to the Tux High School, which is the best soccer high performance center in the country. And the running 16 will also win fantastic scholarships for the year. So essentially at the end of the campaign, we're going to empower 32 youngsters worth displaying and getting their talent to the next level for the year. Many thanks, Lindy Lou, for informing us about this fantastic initiative. Over the next few weeks, we'll be profiling talented young stars on Afternoon Express. Now, if you want to be featured, simply reply to the Facebook and Twitter posts and let us know why we should profile you. To register to be part of Next Level, simply visit vodacomnextlevel.co.za. And after the break, we're joined by Blake Dyson, who's an adventure enthusiast and motivational speaker. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Nutribullet wants to inspire healthy living and making the transition to watching what we eat and how we train. One Nutri Blast a day can help make a big difference in getting all those vital nutrients. We lead such busy lives and keeping our energy levels up and staying focused can be a challenge. This afternoon, we have outdoor enthusiast Blake Dyson in the loft to give us some advice on the matter. Being someone who constantly pushes himself physically and mentally to inspire, support, and give hope to others. We're excited to have him in the loft with us today. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Now, you are somebody who, firstly, you know, you've just lived the most active life ever. And now you've developed the Love Our Trails initiative. What is that? So, I've kind of been pretty passionate about the outdoors most of my life. And um, over the last few years, I've spent hours or months, weeks on the mountains where I've noticed an increase in trail activity. And yeah. with mountain biking growing, probably the fastest growing sport in the world, or one of the fastest growing sports in the world, and we've like up recognised, especially on our mountains, Table exactly. Mountain, and that where there's an increase of feet, and that we've had an increase in litter, we've had an increase in erosion. We recently had rock falls, and um, and I've kind of been saddened by this experience, exactly. um, and not knowing what to do. And I've sent mails to sand parks and other organisations asking, what are we doing to protect it? What are we investing in it? And um, nothing's really come from it. It was last year, early last year, I had a friend from Joburg that came down and I took him on the most amazing trail. Um, I don't know if you've ever done, it's uh, Cliff Corner. I um, have done Cliff Corner actually. So with yeah. the chains and the gap, yeah. oh, it was a mountain. It's insane. <laughs> so I took my friend from Joburg, he's like obviously flat terrain in Joburg, and um, we went up and it was one of those perfect days and went over the top and we have amazing photographs. And, as we were coming down Platter Clip, it was like midday, and there were hundreds of people walking up, tourists, yeah. majority tourists. And we got to the rock in the middle, and everyone was hiding in, in the shady spot. And as I got there trying to go through, I noticed this rock just covered in people's names and litter. And, no. and my heart broke, and I couldn't even look at my friend. I was just like, what have we done? And um, walked down, and I was aware of all the graffiti on the rocks and the litter as we went down, and got home, and it just bothered me for weeks. And, a few nights later, I woke up in the middle of the night and I'm like, we can't point fingers at government anymore. We can't point fingers at businesses. And we, we have to stop asking, what are, what are we getting out of this? And we exactly. need to start asking, what are we doing for our environment, for the people around us? And so I, in the middle of the night, made a Facebook group at that stage, it was called Love Our Trail or Save Our Trails, which are converted to Love Our Trails. And I just invited my trail friends to come and join for a cleanup. And, um, over that like, couple of weeks, I started investigating trail cleaning products and there's nothing in this country, so I had to import graffiti cleaners that are sustainable or user-friendly yeah. for mountains. And that, that kind of grew massively um, to the point that some big brands got on board, Sam Parks has slowly come on board, and we had about 80 people in a day help us clean the mountain. It took wow. six hours to clean that rock, just that one rock of graffiti, and we picked up over 18 bags of litter um, and so I documented this and I filmed like a little video clip and it went like viral in my little world. <laughs> and um, before I knew it, I had been approached from international companies to try and take this concept onto other trails. And so we created like a non-official 
movement that's yeah. kind of just gained traction. And um, one of my friends has just come back from the Himalayas where they're interested in implementing a similar thing there. Um, and we got some other exciting initiatives with some stuff happening in Khrabod. Oh, that's exactly. kind of this concept of Love Our Trails is to be aware of what we're doing. And so it seems quite obvious to me, but you were nominated as an awesome South African. How does one get nominated for that? And how do you win? Because I'd really like to be an awesome South African. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think I stood a chance of winning ever, um, but it was amazing to be nominated. So there's a gentleman by the name of Patrick who, um, I think he met Ria Manson and his wife on the beach one day. And he's like, it's so weird. No one's like approaching you guys on the beach. And they mentioned that when they go overseas, they get bombarded with people wondering to meet them. And, and in South Africa, no one's really aware. Yeah. And so Patrick was like, well, we have all these amazing South Africans doing amazing things, but South Africans don't talk about them or see them. Yeah. And so he started this website and it's kind of grown. And um, so someone phoned into him and said, I know this guy doing cool things. And basically over the years, I've got very involved in charity and doing things. And it was in 2011, I, I got invited by a professional athlete to take part in a 100 miler trail run. Wow. At that stage, I'd run 32, maybe 35 Ks max. And um, I took part in this and I made about 120 Ks before I injured myself. But mm -hmm. I learned so much from it and that was all to raise money and um, awareness around a friend or now a friend that's recently passed called yeah. Letty um, around cancer. And at that moment, I realized how easy it is for us to make a difference and inspire and help others. Exactly. Um, and then she taught me a valuable lesson that we, that our health is our biggest gift and we have to embrace it and protect it and use it. And so from that day, I dedicated my health, vitality, mobility to driving change, making a difference. And, and so everything I do, every action, bit of work, my social life has to have some sort of effect. Um, Wow. positive effects hopefully change someone's mindset or help someone in and so that's led me to like adopting an orphanage and helping them and i recently just got back from cycling across malawi where we um whilst developing a sustainable cycling platform for africa um, and exactly. bicycles are vital to africa so you are you really are an awesome south africa i think you definitely <laughs> should have won now we're running out of time but while i have you here i also love 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 trail walking but i mean some of those table mountain paths are really long and sometimes in the heat or even in the cold it's quite a harsh terrain if you're not prepared now one thing i think it's important to maintain energy so you're going to make me a youtube blast to show me how to maintain all of that energy while i'm trail walking would you mind no, let's go. Thank you. So this is the perfect morning nutri bullet. Um, nutri blast. We, nutri blast. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna start with our bananas. These are slow releasing carbs, ideal for um, a good or a long trail run. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, ice. Always have a cold um, drink in the morning. Yeah, I like Nothing. it quite icy. <laughs> perfect. Go wild with that. Um, and then we're just going to throw everything in. So we got some whey protein, some cinnamon. Yeah. I'm not very great at that word, <laughs> but we'll get that right over time. Um, our ch chai seeds. Chai seeds. They're really cool. They actually also swell throughout the day. That's why they call that miracle plant or ah. seed. Some milk or, and our double espresso oh, or great. coffee. My favorite. Um, and that should give us loads of energy to start the morning. Okay, do I want to blast this for you? Please. That'll definitely give me energy, that double espresso. <laughs> okay, Go. and blast. Amazing. Nice. I think, I don't know, probably, probably 30 seconds, it should be good. All yours. Brilliant, thank you so much. You've definitely inspired me today to get out on the mountains more. But to yeah. be conscious of what's happening around me. It's such a pity that now it's in fashion to be, you know, outdoors and trail running and trail hiking. But it's a pity it's doing damage to our mountains. 100%. I think it's something that we should be more aware of in everything we do in our day-to-day exactly. -day life of exactly. our impacts and what's around us. Great. Here we go. Well, thank you for this. Thank you. I can't wait to get out there in yeah. nature with my new non Yeah, You might have to flavor. go straight after this. Mm. Oh, that is Yummy. so good, because none of the flavors are too overwhelming. 
No, and I quite enjoy the coffee. Mm, very much so. Mm, that's a good one. <laughs> now, for many more delicious and healthy recipes, click on NutriBullet.co.za and start leading that healthy lifestyle along with NutriBullet. After the break, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, so stay right where you are. Welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express, the show where we follow three young designers as they transform three empty apartments at Val de Vie Estate into dream homes using finishes provided by Plascon and Caesar Stone. And at the end of it all, we'll be giving away one of the completed apartments worth over three million rand to one lucky viewer. So for the next two weeks, it's all about the bathroom. And today we're joined by one of our Winner Home judges for some color inspiration. Danilo's on the couch. Decorating a bathroom can easily go terribly wrong and choosing the wrong colour to paint the walls can ruin the common effect of the whole room. Here to help guide us away from disaster is the lovely Anne Rosal, Plascon's Global Colour Manager. It's good to have you. Thank you. So let's talk a bit about this bathroom experience because, I mean, bathrooms are quite a difficult one to get put together. What are some of the no-nos and things that people are generally doing quite wrong when it comes to decorating bathrooms? Okay, well, if you think about it, you start and you end each day in the bathroom. So when you walk into the bathroom in the morning, you want it to be uplifting because mm -hmm. it will sort of set your mood for the whole day. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you want something that's quite relaxing and calming so you can, you know, wind down. Yeah. So beware of very bright, bold colors. I mean, you don't want to wake up in the morning and, you know, go to through the bathroom and you're hit by this bright, passionate red. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, you do want a bit of energy. If you want energy, add some red accessories or whatever, yeah. but beware of painting the walls all red in a bathroom or all yellow. It's just too bright and bold. Yes. And it can go, that's sometimes it when it goes horribly yeah, wrong. Yeah, also when you're trying to focus, it's like distracting to have all the entire room being so many different yeah. colors, you don't even know where to, where to be. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that we can do in terms of choosing the right type of paint? Uh, what kind of color should we go for? Okay, well you want to create like maybe a spa-like bathroom or relaxing or colors that really reflect well on your skin. And ah. that's also something to bear in mind. So yeah, you look don't, in the mirror in the bathroom, careful. so yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you look in the mirror and you look kind of greenish, yeah. but you've got this <laughs> green wall, so, or yellowy, and you think, gosh, I'm I'm Ill. Ill. <laughs> so you want colors that have sort of a peachy undertone or pinky undertone that look yes. good on your skin. Okay. In fact, in our latest issue of Plascon Spaces magazine that we have out now, we show you one bathroom and how you can totally transform it just by changing the colors of the oh, walls. Oh, really? So in our first one, we show you just a plain old neutral bathroom, which is great. It's yeah. fine. You know, neutrals never go out of fashion. It gives you that minimal look mm. and very calming and relaxing. And then our second look is when it really gets interesting mm -hmm. when you add color. So there we have a grown-up pink called Savannah. And pink is a very trendy color at the moment. Yes. As I said, it's Pantone's color of the year's rose quartz. So it's linked to that. So it's very trendy, but it does look beautiful mm. on the skin. Our third bathroom is also a Pantone color of the year. It's a, it's a sky blue. They call it Serenity. We call it Marmelo. And you get a wonderful, cool, refreshing look when you paint the walls blue. And it's like sky and water. It just fits yeah. with the bathroom. Especially if you maybe have a, like more than one bathroom in the house. It might be a nice one to have as a guest bathroom. Because if it is exactly. towards the beachy side of the, of the world, or if you've got a coastline a house, that's a beautiful exactly. uh, color it, it, to paint it the It does. Yeah. It, just, it just fits the whole theme yes. of the space. And, mm. you know, you really feel that water connection, mm -hmm. which is really good for you you know, your yeah, soul really. Exactly. And then our, our fourth bathroom that we showcase is one that's going a little bit different and we've, we've used a military green called Starlight Express and it's really quite different but when you add plants and stuff it's almost like an oasis. Yes. So, you, you know, it's very relaxing, calming. Green is very stress relieving. So it's a great colour also for a bathroom. And then it's up to you to choose mm. which colour you would like to have in your sure, bathroom. Sure, nice ideas. I think people are also stressing because bathrooms are one of those spaces where a lot of damage is potentially coming in there with yeah water damage and coming down. Dampness is also a big one that, that happens. Yes. What kind of paints can we use to protect our walls? What are the hardy, hardy paints that we Good can use? Paint. Okay. Mm. Well, enamels have been traditionally been used in bathrooms because they're hard wearing, they are heat and steam resistant, they're chip resistant, they're anti-mold, but we've all got to be eco-friendly. It used to be enamels, you'd have to wash your brushes with terps and terps and all oh of those no, things are yeah. not great. Mm. Now it's fantastic. We have a water-based enamel called Valvaglow. It's much more eco-friendly. 
friendly. Everything is water and it is just as hard wearing. It's mold resistant, it's heat and steam resistant. It doesn't yellow. You know the old enamels, yes. you paint it white and it would go yellow after a while. Yeah. These mm. stay white. So it's great when new products are eco-friendly, but they're also as good as yeah, the uh, older products. So definitely go for a water-based enamel in the bathroom. I like to take a lot of inspiration from the hotels because they really like to decorate their bathrooms and make them interesting and unique. And a lot of them are using uh, things like wallpapers and really getting wild with those sort of yeah. bathrooms. What's some, what are some of the techniques we can use to, to just really uplift our bathroom? Well, wallpapers are beautiful, but I must admit, admit I'm one of those people who just cannot take wallpaper <laughs> in the bathroom. But a lot of wallpapers actually are paint finishes. If you have a look at them, oh. they're like painted strokes and yes. all of that, and they're doing wallpaper. We'll do it with paint. Okay. It's an amazing amount of techniques you can do with paint mm. so rather use paint you know you can do easy stripes or you could do a stencil in your bathroom with mm. a metallic or you can do something really exciting and do a mural in your bathroom so that really there are endless possibilities of what you can do with paint effects mm. in the bathroom and what I love most about having you in the loft is that you make people so excited about just experimenting with the houses so I'm pretty sure everyone this coming weekend is definitely going to be playing around a little bit either in the bathroom or in any other room of their house just to use color and different types of paint so thank you for joining us such a difference. It Thank does. you. Remember, you stand a chance to win a golden ticket into the Winner Home final draw when you buy a Plascon product and SMS the word Plascon, the last six digits of your barcode, and your full name to 32979. Visit plascon.co.za for more details on how it all works, as well as much more inspiration, color forecasts, and how to go about choosing the perfect colors for your bathroom. Well, some really valuable advice there. We saw on Monday that our design contestants didn't score particularly high for their use of colour. Will that all change for their bathrooms? Let's see what they're up to. Minentlen Tuli's bathroom is coming along nicely and he's choosing a soft, neutral shade to complement the dark tones in his design. I'm picking my paints for my bathrooms. I'm definitely going for an off-white. I'm still stuck in between choosing whether I'm going for the worn wood or the silver bird. I'm going for the off-white because it's going to help make my room bigger than it seems. I'm also bringing in the garden city that I have in my guest bedroom, which is part of the concepts I have to keep the consistency without, throughout the apartment. Also busy at the paint stage is fellow contestant Joanne Fenter, who is continuing her spa-like theme into the serene bathroom. So I'm using a white uh, Plascon Valve Glow because my floor is going to be very dark and I'm going to have hints of light oak and concrete, so I think white will work perfect with the space. I'm using Valve Glow from Plascon because this is a wet area and my bathroom is looking great already. The contestants know the importance of choosing the right product to protect their bathroom surfaces and Rudolf Jordan has made a bold colour choice. So almost done with the first coat here. I think it works well with the tiles I've selected. And um, remember that with my white sanitary fittings, my 50% neutral, 50% black stain on the floors, everything will pop against this color and I think Plascon will like that. This is not the only color I'm gonna use in this bathroom, so you'll have to wait and see what the surprise element is. Well, from today, you can head over to privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite bathroom. And by casting your vote, you stand a chance of winning paint from Plascon to the value of 5,000 Rand. You will also automatically be placed into the grand prize draw where you could win one of those completed apartments at Val de Vie worth more than 3 million Rand. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, don't miss out on Pasella this evening at 7.30 on SABC2. This week, Mishka Patel and Vicky Davis visit the Western Cape farming town of Malmesbury. They go skydiving and introduce dance music sensations, the Luckenville brothers, to Milk Tart. Singer Andriette Norman and her husband, Glynn, hit the dance floor, and Mishka tries a unique and exhilarating extreme sport called Zorbing, while Vicky picks gerberas and learns more about growing paper, which we featured on Afternoon Express earlier this year. Now with Father's Day coming up on Sunday, we turn our attention to a father and son duo who have taken over the world of jazz. Veteran artist Steve Dyer and his son Bokani, who is one of the country's up and coming stars of jazz. They teamed up last weekend for a first ever collaboration show called Dyer Log. Afternoon Express was there to see how it all went down. <laughs> Come 
Considered one of the greats of South African jazz, Steve Dyer is known for his extraordinary skill on multiple instruments, including the guitar, saxophone, and flute. I started off on acoustic guitar when I was about 10 or 11 years old. Um, and then when I was choosing my matric subjects, I saw music as an option. And I said, well, I want to do it. And they said to me, well, there's only one boy in about, since the school started in 1896, that has uh, ever done music. So I said, well, I don't mind, I'll be the second. When I wanted to do music at matric, there was a recorder teacher, and so I started playing recorder. And then I had a brother-in-law who really turned me on to the music of Abdullah Ibrahim and, and all of those guys. And then I thought, what is this improvisation thing? And then recorder and improvising, it's, it's a big challenge. And I also listened to Morris Goldberg, and he played the soprano saxophone, the alto, and the tenor. And I thought, I love the tenor saxophone sound. So I started off with that and later I also played uh, soprano saxophone. After completing a degree in music at the University of Natal in 1981, Steve left for Botswana to avoid the compulsory military conscription of the then apartheid government. My first memory of Botswana was playing the day after I arrived and meeting by Jonas Gwangwa. After that, uh, we formed a group called Shakawe and we played there for about three years solidly uh, in that group. And at the time also, Brahu Masekela was uh, looking to come back to Africa. And he based himself in Botswana and had a band called Kalahari. So there were these two bands that were playing constantly. And that was my induction into real playing Bakanga um, and, and the freedom music of the time. So I never looked on music as a separate entity from the fight that, that was being waged against apartheid South Africa. During his time in Botswana, Steve also fell in love and got married. In 1986, his son Bokani was born, who would ultimately grow up to follow in his father's footsteps. I decided when I was 14 that I wanted to pursue music as a, as a career. I was listening to a lot of music, mostly um, like soul, R&B music, uh, the music that my cousins and my friends were listening to. Um, and the, the, the power of music was really impressed upon me. And um, I, I, I thought to myself, if I could uh, devote my life to, to giving people inspiration and being a creative force behind something, such a positive force, um, I thought it'd be a uh, worthwhile thing to pursue. And that's when I decided. I kind of just uh, gravitated to the piano. There were always two practice rooms at my school, um, at my high school that had pianos in them. There was this guy that always used to play, he was self-taught, and I always used to think, wow, that's so cool, and I really wanted to do that, you know? So I, I had this intrigue, and it was just um, yeah, a very organic thing, me finding the piano, and it kind of worked, worked for me. I worked with Jimmy Gluzu um, for, I was in his band for I think about five years. Yeah, it was really great, uh, amazing musician um, and one of my, my mentors uh, in music. We spent a lot of time speaking about music and um, yeah, I, I learned a lot from him. My music is inspired by everything. Inspiration is like an emotion directed in the musical direction. I can be inspired by a great conversation or something that I see that really gives me a strong feeling about something and, and that gives me the, the impulse to create something. I try to communicate truth uh, through the music that I do. How, as an artist, can I contribute not just to musical sound, but how can I contribute to society in my chosen form? The great pianist Herbie Hancock uh, from the USA said that for a long time he regarded himself as a pianist but it's only recently that he started looking at himself as a human being first. You're a human being that is reflected in other human beings before you do anything else. So I like that connection on a human level and, and how do I contribute to the betterment of society through music? That's what I try and do. Now in 2016, for the first time ever, Steve and Bokani Dyer have collaborated on a show that combines the unique compositions 
of both these formidable artists. The collaboration that we are doing is called Dialogue and it's the first time that we are looking at equal proportions of compositions from myself and Bukaini. So we got together and we looked at how we could shape the show and what compositions informed this musical journey that started in January 1986 when he was born to the present day. So we looked at compositions that could, yes, trace our journey like kind of footprints through our, our passage in time. The collaboration with my dad is very special, very special to me. I mean, he's, he's probably my biggest mentor um, in life and in music. Um, some of the stuff that we perform together is like a song that he composed two days after I was born, you know. So it has a lot of special significance beyond just being like bandmates. It's, it's intertwined, so it's, it's, it has, has a bigger meaning. Wow, that is talent sure. for you. Yeah. Jazz mm -hmm. and jazz. They're really good, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I couldn't wait for this moment. We have to do a demonstration on Jeannie. With Jeannie? Yeah. Please do, because yeah. oh, she okay. says she's got a really strong mind, and any man that wants to come into life, she'll manipulate mentally. So I want to see if she can no, do it. No, I said I don't know if I can be mind read, because I don't know if there's anything in there to read. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No. Well, uh, here's the thing. Um, obviously, like I said, um, I've had a little bit of time to chat to you and to yes. kind of get to know you a little bit. Yeah. And. Um, Earlier, I asked you to insert the thought of an object into your mind, and yeah. just I'll just explain to the viewers briefly. Um, <laughs> we want to know what that uh, is. This was a free selection, <laughs> and I didn't ask you to write it down. You didn't draw it already, no. nothing like that. No. And you haven't told me, and you haven't told no. anyone in the production I've told crew. No one. Even that guy doing nothing, you haven't told. No. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Now, um, I want you in your mind. You can actually close your eyes for me now. I want you just to visualize this object. Okay. See it as bright and as vivid as you can. Now, if I was to try and guess what it is, right, I'd probably get it wrong. Because yeah. I don't really have a very good shot at it, right? But if yeah. I can try and work out what type of person you are, I think I might have a shot at what you oh, would do. Oh, oh, so, uh, so keep your eyes closed. Okay. So the first thing I know is that obviously uh, an object is either going to be an animal, a vegetable, or a mineral. Okay. I, I think off the top of my head you would go for an animal, but I don't think that's what you've done today. I think you would go for um, a mineral, and it would be something that you would find predominantly indoors. I think you'd find this predominantly indoors, mm -hmm. and it would be something that's very important to you and what you do here as a presenter, something that, something that uh, not dictates your life in a bad way, but something that you really have to have to sort of adhere to. Just yes, is this making sense to you? It is. It okay, is, it very is. good. Um, oh, and then this is the question is, um, is, uh, no, that would be too, that would be You too are obvious. not a mentalist. Stop <laughs> trying to read my mind, you that are wrong. That would be too obvious. That's <laughs> not a bad guess. That's not a bad guess, but that would be too <laughs> obvious. Um, That's so, always on my mind, so that would have been way too yeah. obvious. Yeah. And just, just be honest, just yes or no, do you, you have more than one of these? Just yes or no? no. Only one? I only Okay, have. I'm going to go with this. You can, I'll let you see what I do. If I'm wrong, uh, Jeannie, then you let me know. All right? Then you let me know. Uh, how, how good's my... Can you not show that on TV? Oh, no, you can't show that on... Oh, really? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm going to write uh, this. Um, and I'm going to write uh, something like this. Mm. It's going to be something like this. I'm trying this really, really quickly. You can open your eyes. She's smiling. Be absolutely that. honest. Oh. If I'm wrong, if I'm close, let okay. me know. Don't make me look good. Um, what, what object were you visualizing in your mind? Clock. <laughs> How was no! no! That's crazy. That's a <laughs> mineral. How is a watch or a clock a mineral? Oh my god. Wow. That's insane. Um, that's, and that's sorry, okay, hold on. So we gotta do yeah. something to... <laughs> Please sign up for me and then just let me have a selfie. You got two X's? You got two X's? Yeah, yeah. You can get three. Yes! And on that note, you're about to blow your mind. Leave me for an entire weekend. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Good night, happy eating, have a great weekend. What's the time? Oh my gosh, my watch. Next week on Afternoon Express, professional dancer Takis Maswanganya teaches us how to dance in heels. We catch up with our winner home design contestants halfway through completing their bathrooms. And Dr. Sibu Madikana from Brothers for Life joins us in the loft. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel-good production.
Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.